In today's tutorial, let's work on the quick and easy blanket. Look at the textures on this blanket. Let's get started right after this. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as YarnSpirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on the quick and easy blanket just like you see in the picture here. And this is a really neat concept and this concept is just a repeat of four rows once you get past that first row. So it just matter going on, on and on. So in this particular tutorial I'm only going to cover the main body of the blanket. The edging is pretty straightforward. You just got to follow along if you'd like to do this. But I'm going to concentrate more on the interior in this particular tutorial. You're going to need an end or a 10 millimeter crochet hook today. It's asking for Bernat chunky yarn and there's uh, five balls all together that's required. These are bigger balls. They're 400 grams or 14 ounces and uh, there's a main color that you can see in the middle and then the contrasting A would be the border. So let's uh, get started. I'm gonna show you the chart that I made or the diagram and I'll show you that right now. So to help me teach this to you I came up with the diagram that is matching the words for the main part. And you will see that there's a, the dots mean that they're slip stitching and the T's are half double crochet. So those that are familiar with reading diagrams you'll see that this makes sense. So there's a lot of sti uh, slip stitching work and you should know that you're going to be working with the back loops only once you get beyond um, the first row. Okay, so you're always gonna go in the back loops. That's what's giving that raised look. So in order to do this in other sizes, it's multiples of 10 plus six. So if you wanted to change the size, you just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Is it big enough? Yes, no, if not, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then keep doing that until you get to the size that you want. And at the very end of your chain, just add six. And this will keep it in balance so that you have equal sides in balance just like so. So there are two rows will have slip stitching on the sides just like you see and then two rows will have half double crochet. Okay, so that's just a very easy thing to follow. So I'm gonna leave this chart on my, on the crochetcrowd.com website for this particular uh, video tutorial and you can go over there and get this if you'd like to print this out if this is helpful for you. So let's get started. I'm actually using Bernat Softy Chunky. It's not the same kind of yarn. Um, it's uh, kind of thick though but you will go through a ton of these balls. So I would go with the Bernat Chunky yarn. Okay, so not the Softy Chunky but the Bernat Chunky yarn. So let's uh, start off. I'm going to do a swatch as you've seen in the diagram and those are in multiples of 10. And you can follow the instructions if you wish on the pattern itself. You're following the pattern exactly. It is 26, chain 26. But I'm gonna just uh, deviate from that. So I'm gonna go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Look how far 10 goes. It's a big deal. So then you just keep going in multiples of 10 till you get to the size that you want. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And then what you're going to do is once you get to the size that you need, so you keep going and going until you get to the size you need and then at the end you're just gonna add 6 when you're satisfied. So 1, 2, 3, four, five, and six. And that would be your first chain. And let's get started on row number one. So let's begin row number one. So you wanna count to the second chain from the hook. So one and two, turn it over and get the back hump of the stitch. Okay, and then yarn over, pull through that one and the original. That's a slip stitch. So that's one. So the next four are also going to be slip stitching. Now if you looked at the diagram everything was in groups of five if that helps you. So the next four are also going to be slip stitching. So one, two, three, and four. So with the first one that we did plus these four that gives you five. So the next five stitches or chains that are in the next we're gonna half double crochet. So you're gonna wrap the hook first going into the chain, pull through. You have three loops left, pull through all three. That's a half double crochet and you wanna do five of those in a row as well. Okay, so that was two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that is the repeat pattern. So you got your 
uh, slip stitches and then five half double crochets. So the next five are going to be slip stitches again. So just starting again, just going through and through. So in and this will be number two and number three number four and number five. Okay, so now you got those five done. Have double crochet for the next five. And you keep working down the row just like that. Just alternating between the two. So this was two, three, four, and five. And now the next five, okay, and it should be the final five anyway, should be um, six, uh, sorry, five uh, slip stitches. So in my case, I'm end coming to the end of the row. Your row may, will be obviously a lot longer, but there should be five stitches left over or five chains left over at the end. So you can slip stitch the final five to keep it in balance. Just like that. So this is what row number one looks like. So it, it goes up and down in waves. Let's move on to row number two. So let's turn our work and go to row number two. So rows number two to five are always gonna be identical um, for this particular pattern. So now that the first row is done, we never think about that again. And the reason for it is that we're working in the chains. So the next instructions are always telling you to work in stitches. Now for the remainder of this pattern going up, we're always gonna work on the back loop only. So you'll see that stitches always have two strings. Okay, so you always see two when you go into a stitch. In this case it wants you to always go into a back loop for the remainder of this project no matter what row you're on. So you're always going to go into the back one. So the first one is the front loop, the second one is the back loop and together they make up a stitch. Okay and this will give it the raised look that you have. So let's move on to row number two. Row number two, what I want you to do is put this string around the back and coming around from the other side. Okay, so just come around from the other side. It's just easier. Okay, trust me on that. Okay, so now that it's around the back, you're gonna go into the first stitch. So you notice I did not chain up one first. Just immediately go into the back uh, loop only. Yarn over and pull through that one and the, and the first one. That's a slip stitch. So that's one of five. So you're gonna go into the next one. Back loop only, slip stitch. This is two. The next one is three. The next one is four. And the final one is five. Just like this. So here's the uh, half double crochets. So we're gonna, on this particular row, the half double crochets are gonna sit on top of each other. So we wrap the hook and again into the back loop only for the next five half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. So you may wanna count it just to keep yourselves organized. So then the next five are going to be slip stitches again. Again, keeping in the back loop. You will get used to the back loop in no time. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. So now the next five are half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And now the final five, if you're, you keep going all the way down, but the final five should be um, uh, slip stitches as well in the final five. Remember back loop only. So one, two, three, four, and five. Right into the very last one. So this would be how you would complete row number two. So now look at it. It's kind of looking interesting isn't it? So let's move along to row number three. Let's turn our work and go to row number three. So now the game plan for three and four is that the half double crochets are gonna sit in the valleys 
and we're gonna be doing the slip stitching on top. Okay, so there will be half double crochets in the valleys and slip stitching on the top. So to begin we're going to chain two. This does not count as a stitch. This is not like double crochet. This is more like a working stitch to get yourself higher and you are going to want to go into the very first one that's right underneath it. Okay, and you want a half double crochet for this one plus the next four. So one, two, This is three, and four. Okay, so I'm just making sure. So one, two, three, and four, and the next one is your final. So this is number five. So then the next five are going to be slip stitches, and these are on top of the valleys this time. So, so one, two, three, four and five and then the next five are half double crochets again. We got one, we have two, three, four and five. Okay, and the next ones are going to be slip stitches again for five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then the final five are half double crochets each. So there's gonna be five. So one, I'd probably recommend in this pattern that you do keep counts of five. You may get tired of counting to five, but I think for the look that it creates, it's amazing. And again, if you're ever sure, just count. So one, two, and I have the final one to go in. Okay, so this is row number three. Let's move along to row number four. Okay, let's do number four and turn our work. So number four is a repeat of what we've just done in row number three. So we're gonna chain up two. Remember that does not count as a stitch or anything, or does not count as a post or anything. So we're gonna come immediately into the first one for uh, half double crochet plus four more of the next. Okay, so this is two, three, four, and there should be a total of five in a row. That includes that first one. Okay, so you can count it out. It's one, two, three, four, five, and the next five are going to be slip stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. So the next five are what? They're gonna be half double crochets. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then the next five are slip stitches. So one, two, three, four, and five. And then the final are going to be half double crochets. So this is concluding row number four. And we're gonna move on to row number five before the pattern repeats itself back to row number two once again. So we continue the final five should be one half double crochet in each. Don't be confused with that one that you're chaining up with five. That's just a builder. So you just wanna make sure you're keeping them in groups of five. Let's move on to row number five before the repeat pattern starts once again. So let's turn our work and go for row number five. So this is what it's looking like. It's a double sided pattern. Each side has, its, has the look so it doesn't matter which side is up when it comes to placing on your sofa. So number five, we're going to be going back to our roots and when, what we started over here. So we're gonna go back to narrow again before getting bigger. So on the tops of the valleys, there's gonna be slip stitching and on the bottoms of the valleys, there's going to be the half double crochets. So let's begin. Remember what I told you before. Put the string onto the other side, the back side, 
before beginning this one going in you don't chain one at all you just go into the same stitch back post only or back uh, loop only and slip stitch. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. So the next five will be half double crochets. So the next five and these are in the, the valleys. So that was one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, and so the next five are slip stitches again. So, so one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, the next one is half double crochet for the next five. So one, two, three, four and five and then the final ones the five five or it's gonna be the five final five of slip stitching. So it's one, two, three, four and five. So that would be concluding row number five. So now you're just gonna all automatically go back to row number two. I'll get you started on that but this is what it looks like. Isn't that neat? The picture is doesn't it, like it really the picture is amazing. So if you do this in lighter yarns you can see the stitch work probably easier but again that's completely up to you. So um, let me start you off on row number two and then I'll leave you to do the rest of this project on your own. Let's turn our work and go back to row number two to get you started. So where we are right now is that we are, have the slip stitching here and we have to do another slip stitching in order to keep it in balance. So this is row number two. Again put this yarn on the back side to start it. I just find it's easier going into the first back loop only. Slip stitch for the first five. So this is two, three, this is four and five and the next five are going to be half double crochets. So you already know what to do at this point. It's pretty straightforward. So this is two, three, four and five and you're just gonna continue just like that and you will see that the stitch work will be absolutely amazing and it will turn out really cool in the long term. So you'll see this grow pretty quickly. It is the Bernat Chunky line and uh, good luck on your Afghan and we'd love to see your photos being posted on Facebook and until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and we'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.